pretty hot. All right, you guys over there in Eureka land, it's Professor Pumpernickel again here with another scientific video of extraordinary stories and explosions this week. Yes, I'm taking a little bit of inspiration from Ian's a storyteller. It has been inspiring me quite a lot with his wonderful tales. So I thought, well, I've got a couple of tales of my own and uh, they're true stories and you're gonna learn some stuff too. So let's get on with that. So get comfortable, you guys, because Professor Pumpernickel's about to tell you two stories. The first story starts way back in history in 1799. In this year, a man called Christian Friedrich Schönbein was born. And this character in history was an incredible man. Some of his discoveries have helped us further the technological evolution of the human race. You see, Schoenbein was responsible for discovering and inventing a type of explosive. And how he discovered this was purely by accident. He was messing around one day. He liked to take a few of his chemicals home, uh, much to the protest of his wife. She was always telling him off for experimenting in the kitchen. Well, she was out one day he brought out his sulfuric acid. Ooh, pretty dangerous. He also brought out a tub of nitric acid. And as he was playing around and experimenting with various chemicals and acids, he accidentally knocked the two containers over. They spilled their contents of sulfuric and nitric acid all over the table. Well, before his wife could discover what had happened, he quickly rushed over to the sink and took her cotton apron hanging over the draw handle. He snatched it and began to mop up all of the nitric acid and the sulfuric acid with this natural cotton fabric apron, which his wife used to wear to do the washing of the dishes. Now, as it became soaked with the acid, he decided to hang it out over the back of a chair in front of the coal fire. Now, as it dried and dried over the course of a few hours. Something happened when it became dry enough to accept a small stray spark which shot out of the fire. And I'll show you exactly what happened to Mrs. Schoenbein's cotton apron. Over here I have a simple piece of tissue paper. Okay, there we go. That's just a piece of ordinary tissue paper that you could blow your nose on. Except this has been treated with the same chemicals Schoenbein had mopped up with his apron. This has been treated with sulfuric and nitric acid. It was paper to start with, it still is, but inside the molecules have been changed very slightly. We've introduced a lot of oxygen. So, let's see what happened to Mrs. Schoenbein's apron when a stray spark had touched it from the fire. It disappeared in a huge column of fire. There was no ash. There was no smoke. There was a little bit of a slightly pleasant smell, but nothing left of the apron to be seen. Let me show you again. A simple piece of paper and uh, I will touch it with the spark. It completely disappears. Absolutely amazed was Schoenbein. And so he dashed straight to the laboratory. Well, via the apron shop to buy a replacement apron, of course. But then he went to the laboratory and he got to work with various natural fabrics and he started to play with them. He started to mix them and soak them into various acids. He had created nitrocellulose. Now, this is an important invention because it is still used today. So I'm going to show you just what we were using before this nitrocellulose came into existence. I have here behind me a small dish. And inside the small dish, we have one gram of black powder. Now black powder, 
has been used for centuries for shooting bullets and blasting rock. Okay, so I'm going to show you just what black powder looks like when we add a small spark to it. See what happens. Yep, a lot of smoke. And it's pretty smelly too. So, it smells like rotten eggs. Now, this is just one of the advantages with nitrocellulose. It doesn't smell of rotten eggs. In fact, it has quite a pleasant smell. Now my uh, laboratory here is filling up with smoke. With the nitrocellulose, you have no smoke at all. Now this revolutionized warfare. All of a sudden, we could fire bullets without any of that thick white smoke. You could no longer see your enemy shooting at you. Uh, now this is a little bit of a grim part of the story, I'm afraid. Nitrocellulose explosives was also used for blasting rock. And uh, I have some of that right here. There it is. Now it looks just like cotton wool. Okay, it looks just like cotton wool. It feels like cotton wool. I could probably put it in my ears if Mrs. Pumpernickel was snoring and it would uh, help me get to sleep. But I wouldn't want to sleep next to the fire with it in my ears. Oh no. Because just like the paper, just like Mrs. Schoenbein's apron, this has been treated with nitric and sulfuric acid. And, and this is what they call gun cotton. It was used for cannons, it was used for big artillery guns, but it was also used for mining rock and blasting quarries. Um, it's also used by magicians. And I actually bought this from a magician's shop. Yes, the paper I set fire to was from a magician's shop and this also. It's called flash cotton or flash paper, but it's exactly the same stuff that the Schoenbein had created. So let me show you the wonderful properties of gun cotton. It burns so rapid, so fast. <laughs> My little igniter. It burns so rapid and so fast that it would leave barely a mark on this paper envelope. So let's put the paper envelope here. We put the gun cotton right here and in the blink of an eye, it will disappear. <laughs> no smoke at all. In fact, I barely felt a thing. There's not a single mark on this brown paper here. Okay, completely untouched. And because of this rapid burning, it was brilliant for moving large quantities of rock. And uh, still used today, by magicians. So there's a wonderful little story. And this leads me to my second story. And this second story starts in 1981 when I was just a small boy. I remember this on the news, in fact. I remember it being on the television. In 1981 in Banbury, which is a town in England, uh, there was a factory. And this factory made custard powder. This can't be an explosive, it can't be a toxic, it's not dangerous, it's just custard powder. Well, you would be wrong to assume this. This is why fire is so dangerous. It can catch you unawares if you don't know the risks involved. At the Bird's Custard Powder Factory, there was an explosion. And it was a result of custard powder particles suspended in the air. This is what's known as a dust explosion. But I'm going to show you this dust explosion here in my laboratory. And I have right here in this box my replica explosion in the custard powder factory. There we go. A little bit of custard powder there. Nice, nice, nice. And we're going to set this on fire. Now, nothing much is happening here, of course. A bit of smoke perhaps but there's not much of an explosion going on and I'll tell you why that is you see on the dish here we have 
the fuel, the custard powder, but we don't have a lot of oxygen. There's not a lot of oxygen surrounding it. We've got to get the fuel into the air. We've got to make a cloud of this stuff so it mixes with all the oxygen. And if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that oxygen and fire, well, they make a really good partnership. Yes, you take away the oxygen and then you extinguish the fire. So what we're going to do is the opposite. We're going to provide a lot of oxygen. I'm going to do this by using this tube here. Three spoons of custard powder. All right. Now it's in the tube here. Because what I'm going to do now is take a deep breath. I'm going to blow as hard as I can down the tube. As I blow, the air will push out all of the custard powder into the air and make a huge cloud of suspended particles that are floating around, mixing with all that wonderful oxygen. And when we add a spark, something should happen. Let's have a look. Three, two, one. Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo. Wow, that was pretty hot. I'm gonna do that one more time, just because I know you want me to. Remember, Professor Pumpernickel does this, so you guys don't have to do it at home. Yes, don't ever play around with this stuff. It is dangerous, although it's only custard powder, it is incredibly dangerous. Just like anything, anything you can touch, feel, or smell, or look at is incredibly dangerous when fire is involved because it will do things you just never expect it to do. So the message here in this video is never play with fire because even something as silly as custard powder can result in an entire factory exploding. It blew the roof off. I mean, it just took the roof clean off. Uh, nine people became incredibly injured and were hospitalized just because of custard powder. So don't play with fire. Now I'm going to do this one from behind the camera so that you can see how huge the fireball is. Whew. Well, we didn't quite reach the nitrocellulose. <laughs> but you saw how huge it was. So thank you for watching this week. Not time to finish yet though, is it? It's competition time. Now, Alba from last week, you clearly won the competition by blowing eight bazillion kisses for Professor Pumpernickel's brother, Mr. Foppletwig and Ian Douglas and uh, Gacko's video. You have won yourself a goodie bag from Eureka and a pass for the whole family. So well done, Alba. Now, here is this week's competition. I'm not gonna make it too difficult. I want you to put your answer in the comments section and just tell me who was the chemist born in 1799 in Germany and invented the explosive nitrocellulose and also discovered the gas ozone, yes? Pretty simple if you've been watching the video. Put your comments and your answers in the comments section and I'll announce a winner next week. And until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week. Stay safe, have fun and goodbye for now.